Bilbies are such an important species, not just because they look pretty cute, um, but functionally they're really important because they provide a litmus test for what's happening in arid Australia in the bush and in the outback. Um, they are just on the edge of, we know that they can occur where cattle occur, where cats occur, and what we're trying to do is work out how to get the conditions to make them um, more, more abundant or more widespread. In doing that, um, they provide an umbrella species. If you can get bilbies back into country, you will be helping out a whole range of species. So it becomes really, really important to allow this bilby research is not just for bilbies, it's for a whole range of species because underneath them, if you can get the right conditions that will, that will reduce predation, reduce problems from um, rabbits and overgrazing, then you can actually improve the, the conditions for a whole range of species. So focusing on the bilby allows you to say, okay, is this country good for bilbies? If it is good for bilbies, it's a whole, good for a whole range of other species. So that's a really important thing. The other thing that, you know, these species, the bilby has been around for over 30 million years. That particular lineage of bandicoots, it's in its own family. It's been kicking around the earth for 30 million years. And I just found it incredible that we could allow something that's been hanging in there for 30 million years to fall over in our watch. It's just really, really, really sad if that's gonna, we're going to allow that to happen. It's needed to really understand the, the change in the distribution and uh, relative abundance of bilbies throughout their range within Queensland. So we can do this by revisiting sites that have been monitored previously and also assess more broadly where they might be occurring and you can get the extent of their occurrence by revisiting established sites allows you to actually work out how continuously they're, they're present in a particular location, whether they're blinking out. Bilbies can move very long distances. They can move five kilometers a night if they want to. Um, and that means that they not, might not necessarily be um, lost from a, from a location that you're standing at. They might have just moved off somewhere else. Uh, so it's really, important that we understand their, their broad distribution, but also how continuously they are occupying a particular area. Well, we need to work out whether the population is stable or increasing or decreasing. And we know from previous surveys that there seems to be a, a, a decline in the, the extent of occurrence. That's where they're occurring throughout the whole range. And even though they're occurring in some locations, the population fluxes a lot over over years because of in response to rainfall, and that means food availability and also the predator pressures that build up after rainfall. So we're very keen to work out whether the population is stable or decreasing or increasing. Overall, it provides us with an understanding of what comp um, combination of predators and stock and rabbits and all those other factors which I mentioned. Um, are tolerable to bilby populations. So we're piecing the whole picture together. The best way we can possibly do these surveys is to fly a lot of the areas um, using a fixed wing aircraft with spotters. And they've uh, been used previously and there's some set transects which have been flown on a number of occasions. And to refly these would provide us with a very good indication of where bilby activity is because you can see the burrows quite easily from the aircraft. And then the task for us is to visit a proportion of those areas where bilby burrows have been seen and work out whether they're it's old sign, like might be inactive, but there's still burrow uh, diggings evident, or whether the sign is still fresh and active. And by that method, we can actually work out where bilbies were in the recent past within the last sort of five to 10 years and where they are currently present. So there's a, a way to actually understand if the population is declining 
from a number of angles to work out whether the, the sign uh, of old burrows indicates whether they were in the past uh, and whether it's fresh sign. The, the aerial survey is really useful because we can pick up the outlier populations very easily and then that provides us with um, some target to go and focus on when we to, to revisit those areas on the grounds and work out whether we're finding decent sign there or not. I think it's important to maintain a backup population um, of bilbies within predator controlled areas, um, likely fenced areas which remove predator pressure, and also to some degree an, um, a captive breeding population. And I think it is then really, really important to maintain a focus on the wild population because I, I believe that is where the most value can come out of understanding where the population of the value of the population nationally, and also to understand how well that population will be able to survive into the future. When we need those wild populations, you can't sustain a population, a breeding population in captivity uh, into um, the next 100, 200 years, it just won't work. We need to keep wild populations going. Okay, so because of the work I did back in the early 80s, um, I was sort of keen to revisit those sites just to work out whether there are still bilbies there because I've been, I've been interested in bilbies basically all my professional life. Um, and there was a guy out there, Peter McRae, who's since passed away, who's, who basically took up the investigation of where bilbies were in Queensland very thoroughly after I've visited. And I was just keen to work out from my own interest where these animals were, if they were still in the, in the areas we had visited back in the early 80s. So um, it was a case of just trying to revisit those locations. And from that, uh, with the assistance of of Kev and the funding from the Save the Bilby Fund plus Taronga Park Zoo and a number of other organizations, we were able to develop a bit of a survey and a preliminary survey. And we went out and I traveled back to some of those sites and we picked up some other locations as well. And we're just really working out where they were in the landscape still, where they're still occurring on the stony downs and the clay downs. I was particularly interested because after the the rabbit hemorrhagic disease came through in the mid nineties. Um, we've had found out from other research that a lot of the native animals were, had expanded out. This is particularly in, in South Australia. So things like the Mulgaras and a lot of the hopping mice that were very restricted in range were starting to expand out. And the only thing that seemed to fit that sort of expansion was really the decline of rabbits in some of these arid areas. And I was interested to work out whether the bilbies had expanded out from their known range after the rabbit decline. And it was 10 or 15 years after the rabbits had declined. And it took that amount of time for them, for the actual population to respond. So that is the, one of the main objectives, just to work out whether the bilbies were still occurring on these, the same types of habitat and had their extent actually increased. So, it was a case of just getting back to those sites and working out where they were occurring. 